It's that time of year again where the city manager presents the proposed budget. Under the city charter, I am obligated to draft and develop a budget and present it to council, a balanced budget, and that we have done. Um, I gave a presentation uh, based on the assumptions for the coming year. We have a lot of uh, challenges to work through. One of the key things we talked about were unfunded liabilities and the continued pressure they're placing on our general fund. So general fund revenue since about 08 has been declining or at least stagnant. While at the same time, our annual contributions to our pensions and our health care funds for current employees and retirees has been increasing. And they're putting pressure. And so we saw about a $1.7 million cost reductions that we did over the last 20 months. That bought us some time. But in the longer term, we have to look at how do we, how do we stifle the growth of the unfunded liabilities and begin paying them down so that the next generation doesn't have to worry about them. Because in our current track, the pension and health care fund are unsustainable in their current, current structure. And so moving forward, we begin defining those problems. MERS, who handles our retiree health care and pension funds, have done what's called an experience study. And what that looks at is mortality tables, people are living longer, the assumptions on our return on investment, that assumption went from, we, we average about 8% return. Uh, they've moved that projection down to 7.75%. Another thing they look at is shorting the amortization period of the payoff for those unfunded liabilities. And every year the amortization period gets shorter and shorter. Those three components have not been applied to our current actuarial models. And we won't get that information until sometime in June or July. And that could have a profound impact on our annual contributions to our unfunded liabilities and the status of our unfunded liabilities. And so when we get that experience study in and we get our new actuarial study back in this summer, we will take three to six months to work with our finance team and our financial partners at Plant Moran, our auditing firm, to develop some options for the mayor and council to look at to address the issues of pension and health care costs and unfunded liabilities going forward. And so it's a very complex and challenging topic. Um, one we're hoping to educate the community on. People can go on YouTube and are on the city website and, and watch our budget presentation. They can download our budget presentation and read it. The entire line item budget has been put out there for the, uh, for, the for public inspection. Uh, we've done that before the public hearing. Um, so we, we, we wanted to present the budget and make those documents available so people knew what we were actually having a hearing on. Um, so when you have challenges, transparency is key uh, to developing consensus. And so we're trying to be very forthright and open about the challenges we face and, and what we're dealing with. But the budget this year uh, does not reduce public services. It does not cut staffing. It does not include layoffs. And so it's a pretty status quo budget. And to be quite frank, it's because we don't have those new, new data points from our actuarial studies to make those long-term changes. And so we want to make sure we do this in a very strategic manner and not rash. I think it's become pretty evident um, to the community and to the mayor and council that a change in direction in leadership is needed at McMorrin. And uh, you know, we worked, with, we worked with SMG and I think it became mutually uh, beneficial to essentially separate, separate ways, in part ways. So they adopted an amendment to our SMG contract, which essentially, essentially brings the termination date about a year forward. So we're terminating the agreement early. Uh, we allows us to uh, hire the McMoore employees back if we, if we so choose to, and we'll look at those options. So in the coming weeks, we'll look at a proposal I'll bring forth to the McMoore Authority first and to the Mayor and Council proposal to place that under Parks and Recreation. We have been very successful in our Parks and Recreation for Rock on the River, our programming throughout the summertime. And so I believe, and the Mayor and Council believe, that McMoore is an asset and a real gem to the community. And the question we want to ask is, how do we develop more programs that bring more people downtown that increase the awareness of McMorrin and increase its economic impact and role in our downtown? This past week, the Prowlers won the Commissioner's Cup. There was more than 2,000 people there that night. A couple days before that, the Harlem Globe Trials were there, about 2,000 people. And then Saturday night, we finished off the week with uh, Chase Bryant, the uh, 107.1 concert. They had about 2,300 people there. So in a short week, about 6,000 people walked through the doors of McMorrin. But before they walked through the doors and after they left the doors, they went downtown and had dinner. They had drinks with their family. And that's a real jolt in the arm to downtown. So how do, we, how do we increase that economic impact of McMorrin? Because I truly believe that if handled properly, 
the McMorrin's days are, are much better going forward. And so we want to show some new leadership down there, inject some new ideas and new strategy to developing events. And I think we're going to focus on growing and creating our own events rather than focusing on attracting all this national talent. We can, we can, we can have our own concerts and we can have our own successes. We have a developer, a very credible developer, who has come forward with a purchase agreement to purchase the property, cash offer, uh, and intends to develop the property within a year. And so that's pretty exciting, a mid-rise, six to seven story mid-rise building for condos or hotels, that's yet to be determined. But it's, it's, it's a very testament to the strength of our, our downtown right now. When you have multiple developers vying for the same piece of property. It's a far cry from where we were a few years ago. But this is just another piece to the puzzle of downtown. You see a $10 million investment in Sperry's. You see almost a $10, $15 million investment in the City Flats Hotel. You see a $160 million investment in the new McLaren Tower. You see about a $21 million uh, investment into Lake Huron Medical Center. You see about a million dollars into the Citadel, a black box theater with retail and lofts. We see all these high-end lofts popping up downtown. So. In the downtown district, there's about $200 million of investment going on right now or will take place within the next 12 months. And it's very exciting for our downtown, but it also bolsters what's happening on in our industrial park. You see Iceman Automotive, which has an 85,000 square foot expansion they're working on, growing to almost 200 employees. They have almost 100 employees from where they, more than they had last year. You see U.S. Fairthane hiring and expanding. Mueller Brass investing about 29 million in new uh, equipment for their, so, for their facility. So you see a robust economic recovery. Our unemployment's been cut in half. And so it's just a really exciting time in Port Huron. Uh, we, you know, it's citizen-led, it's not government-driven. You see our entrepreneurs, our business owners, and our citizens starting a business, growing a business, buying a building, remodeling it, putting it in a retail store. Those types of grassroots, boots on the ground, entrepreneurial spirit, that's what's leading this. And it's exciting because when it's citizen-led and not government-led, it's more sustainable. And so we want to create a conducive environment reduce the burden of government, reduce the red tape, and allow our entrepreneurs to do what they do best. And that's to create jobs and prosperity for our citizens. Government doesn't create jobs. We just hopefully can create an environment in which jobs and entrepreneurs flourish. And that's what we're working on, especially with this budget and unfunded liabilities.